In this video, we'll be providing an overview of two of the most important concepts in poker, equity and EV, as well as a new related concept which you may have heard me discuss in prior videos called EV regret. In his seminal work, Expert Heads Up No Limit Hold'em, Will Tipton defined equity as the share of the pot that a player expects to win on average if all betting is stopped and both players check to showdown. In other words, equity measures the likelihood or probability of our hand winning or tying against all of our opponent's possible hands across all possible runouts without taking into account future betting action. Knowing our likelihood to win is important because poker, in essence, is a game where we place wagers based on who we think will have the best hand at the end of the game. To draw an analogy, imagine if an NBA team were going to play a high school team and you had the opportunity to bet on the game at even odds, but the team you're allowed to bet on is chosen randomly. If you had the opportunity to bet on the NBA team, you would bet an infinite amount because their likelihood to win would be very high. But if you instead had the opportunity to bet on the high school team, you would likely not bet at all because their likelihood to win would be very low. Similarly, in poker, Putting aside bluffs and traps, the higher equity your hand has, generally speaking, the more incentivized you should be to wager on winning by placing bets into the pot. As such, equity is the most commonly used measure of hand strength, and it's particularly useful because it's expressed as a percentage between 0 to 100, and therefore you can compare hand strengths very easily across different scenarios. However, since equity does not take into account future bets, its usefulness in practice is somewhat limited. In reality, unless everyone's all in, players can place bets and cause others to fold, thereby denying the realization of that equity. So a hand like Ace of Spades, Seven of Diamonds on this Queen-5-2 two-tone board may have decent equity since it would be relatively likely to win if we fast forwarded to Showdown, but unless we make a pair, it will be very difficult for us to realize that equity if our opponent places one or more bets, which equity does not take into account. And this is where EV, or expected value, comes into play. Another seminal work, The Mathematics of Poker, defines the expected value of an action as the value of each potential outcome from taking such action multiplied by its probability, all summed together. A solver calculates EV for each combination within our range by playing out a single hand across all possible runouts and all possible strategies and counter strategies billions of times over and adding up the weighted average of all of the possible outcomes in terms of chips won or lost, whether it be at showdown or upon a fold. So unlike equity which focuses on the raw value of a hand, EV focuses on the relative value of each available action for a hand and takes into account all possible chance elements and future bets and folds. Going back to our example, we see that although Ace of Spades, Seven of Diamonds has much higher equity compared to Jack of Clubs, Ten of Hearts, this combo actually has significantly greater average EV because with both the backdoor flush draw and backdoor straight draw, it has a better chance of realizing or even over-realizing its equity since in addition to making a weak pair, it has a chance to improve on many turn cards and make a very strong hand and win a bunch of chips on the number of rivers, whereas Ace of Spades, Seven of Diamonds has a much lower probability of making a very strong hand and even if it pairs its ace, it will often be dominated and end up losing a lot of chips. So although unlike equity, EV is expressed in chips and not as a percentage, and therefore it's more difficult to compare EVs across different scenarios, since EV tells us the average number of chips we should expect to win when taking an action, when we make decisions at the felt, we should always be striving to take the actions that we estimate have the highest EV, making it the most important metric in poker. And this brings us to the third concept for this video, which is EV regret. Now you won't find EV regret defined in any literature on game theory or in any Google search because it's a concept that we created to help simplify learning GTO strategies. The genesis of EV regret was born from the struggles that I personally went through to learn GTO. Given poker's enormous complexity, I knew that if I wanted to master GTO, I would have to learn it incrementally. So I focused primarily on my biggest gaps in knowledge first which were the spots where there were major inconsistencies between the strategies that I thought were optimal and the strategies that were actually optimal as calculated by the solver. 
and since EV is the most important metric in poker, I used it as the primary measuring stick to assess the degree of this deviation. If my strategies in a spot resulted in very large EV losses compared to GTO, I would pay special attention to the spot in an effort to understand why the solver was using a different strategy and then refine my logic accordingly. However, if my strategies led to an error that resulted in a relatively small EV loss, I would typically focus much less attention on the spot because I knew there would be plenty of other areas that I could study and gain more EV, which would be a much more efficient use of my time. Right, often the strategies determined by the solver are the result of how the player's ranges uniquely match up against each other down to fractions of combos, so small EV losses may be the result not of an inherent flaw in strategic logic, but rather due to not being familiar enough with the spot to know where the exact cutoff points lie, which is more of a matter of practice and repetition. For example, let's assume that in this hand the action went check check on the flop, the turn was the 5 of hearts, and the big blind needs to decide if he should check again or bet while holding 10 of clubs, jack of hearts. A common logic that might be employed in this type of spot could be something to the effect of the following. With jack high, we have no showdown value, and the button is likely not to be very strong after checking a flop that was favorable to him, so we should try to bet to get a fold. And in terms of the sizing, we want to target mainly ace high type of hands that would have checked the flop, so we're going to bet two thirds pot, and we have plenty of 5x and queen x in our range that will support this sizing. Now this strategy sounds somewhat reasonable, but how do we test the validity of our hypothesis? Well, we can examine the EVs for the different actions for our combo, since, as noted earlier, EV tells us how much we should expect to win by taking each action. In this case, we have 5 available actions, bet 150% of pot, bet full pot, bet 2 thirds pot, bet third pot, or check, with the optimal frequencies for each action displayed under the action columns, and the EV of taking each such action displayed in the next column to the right. Here we see that the EV for betting two thirds pot with this combo is 0.2993 big blinds. This means that if we decide to bet 10 of clubs, jack of hearts, two thirds pot against all of our opponent's possible hands and counter strategies and across all possible river cards, on average, we should expect to win 0.2993 big blinds. But of course, since EV is not standardized as a percentage like equity, it's only valuable as a measurement tool when we can compare it to the EVs of our alternative actions. In this case, we see that the action with the highest EV is actually to bet 150% of pot. However, the EV difference between betting 150% versus betting two thirds pot is only around 0.01 big blinds. So this is a situation where I think we can conclude that either play is generally solve or approved and therefore, it wouldn't make much sense to spend a ton of time trying to figure out why the solver prefers the larger bet here. But does the fact that we have confirmed that our play for our specific hand was solver approved mean that the logic we use for making our decision to bet all jack high hands and below was sound? Not so fast. If we check another jack high combo, such as jack of spades, eight of diamonds, we see that the EV for checking is significantly higher than all of the betting options. So if we had stopped our review after only checking the strategy for our particular hand, 10 of clubs, jack of hearts, it would have likely reinforced the idea that our overall logic was sound, but it wasn't. It was overly simplified. The reality is that the big blind arrives at the turn with essentially 100% of its range because it wasn't really donking the flop, and so it has a ton of weak combos in its range, many of which have better bluffing properties such as numerous straight and flush draws. So we can't just bluntly bluff all of our combos that are jack high or below if we want to avoid over bluffing. In this case, even though 10 of clubs, jack of hearts doesn't have a draw, it's a particularly good combo to barrel because it blocks both flush draws and will be a strong bluffing candidate on club or heart rivers, but not all combos in this class share these attributes. In other words, checking a sim to see if how we played our specific hand was solver approved has limited usefulness because it's highly unlikely that we will ever encounter the exact same spot with the exact same combo ever again. However, it is much more valuable to check us in to see if our logic 
or the heuristics we use to make our decision or solve are approved, because generalized heuristics can be applied to a variety of spots that share common characteristics, even if we have never studied those specific spots before. And the only objective way to check if our logic is solved or approved is by analyzing the strategies for all of the combos that fit within our heuristic. However, as you can probably imagine, checking all of the EVs for each such combo can be extremely tedious and time consuming. Although Peel Solver, which is a solver that I primarily use to learn GTO, does have an EV comparison function, you can only compare two actions at a time, and you can't compare EVs for select groups of hands. So, as the old saying goes, Necessity is the mother of invention, and thus we created the EV regret algorithm to do this work for us instantaneously. For each available action for a filtered group of hands, EV regret compares the EV of such action against the EV of all other available actions for such group of hands. If the EV of such action is the highest, the EV regret is zero because it means that we will have no regrets to take that action over the other available options. However, when the EV for an alternative action is higher, EV regret calculates the maximum amount of EV we'll lose, expressed as a percentage of the pot, by taking such action over the alternatives. And so if we take a look at the class action table, which calculates the average optimal frequencies and EV regrets for each action for the class of hands selected by the user, we see that the EV regret for checking this specific hand is zero, since this is the action with the highest EV for this particular hand. This means that if we decided to use a pure strategy and just check this combo 100% of the time in this exact spot, then we would not lose anything in expectation against a GTO opponent. In contrast, we see that the EV regret for betting third pot is 4.1% of the pot, which is due to the fact that the EV of betting one third pot is significantly lower than the action with the highest EV, in this case checking. This means that the amount that we should expect to lose on average for betting third pot instead of checking would be around 0.2 big blinds against a GTO opponent. Now obviously just calculating the EV regret for a single combo like this doesn't really add much value. The true usefulness of this metric becomes apparent when we're able to quickly measure the max EV loss across larger groups of hands without having to analyze each hand individually. For example, if we remove the filter for this specific combo, the class action table has now recalculated the average frequencies and EV regret for all of the jack 8 off combos in our range. And we see that the EV regret for checking all of these combos is just 0.5% of the pot, which means that if we decide to simply check each of our jack 8 off combos in this spot, we won't be losing much in EV and we're able to ascertain this instantaneously instead of having to examine each of these combos individually. But of course, grouping just our Jack-8 off combos together and analyzing their strategies isn't all that useful either. Right, in this type of spot, is there really anyone that would devise a unique strategy specifically for their Jack-8 off combos alone? No, it's much more likely the case that most would devise a strategy for a larger region of their range such as hands with little to no showdown value. So let's zoom out even further by focusing on all of our unmade hands which are not ace or king high. And now we see that the EV regret for betting two thirds pot with all of the hands in this class is greater than 5% of the pot, which means that the logic we employed here to bet all hands jack high and lower two thirds pot will lose us a maximum amount of around 0.24 big blinds of EV compared to the GTL solution. So ultimately, you can view EV regret as a sort of quantification of opportunity cost. There's an inherent trade-off when learning poker between simplification and EV retention. And since the human race is not a monolith, GTO check leaves it up to the individual user to determine his own appropriate balance between simplification and EV retention. Some people have more experience or greater capacity to process information than others, so it would be silly for us to try to ordain a one-size-fits-all approach to learning. Also, not everyone is interested in employing perfect GTO strategies. For example, if you're trying to exploit a player that you believe overfolds on turns, then a 0.24 big blind EV difference may be small enough such that when your opponent overfolds, the EV of betting increases to the point that it actually surpasses the EV of checking for all of these hands. 
And in that scenario, it would be more profitable to just bet all of these trash hands indiscriminately. On the other hand, if you're playing against a more balanced opponent that will have some traps in their range that you don't want to blast off against, you can use EV Regret as a measuring stick to help refine your strategies. For example, if we group all of these hands that have some sort of draw on the turn, now we see that the EV Regrets for betting 2 thirds pot, full pot, and 150% pot are 1% or less. And then when we isolate our nothing hands without a draw, the EV Regret for checking all of these hands is 1.3% of the pot, and the only hands in this class that are betting with high frequency have both a heart and a club. So we could, for example, add more nuance to our logic by instead of simply bluffing all jack high hands and below in this type of spot, decide to bluff all jack high hands and below with a draw or which contain both flushed blockers and then give up with the rest. Now obviously this type of heuristic by definition will not be perfect in every situation. Also, using EV Regret in this way simplifies strategies by essentially looking through the solver's complex mixed frequencies. However, frequencies are still important for purposes of balance, so completely ignoring them can open up one to being exploited. That all being said, it's impossible to memorize GTO frequencies for the entire game, and everyone needs to start somewhere, so sacrificing some precision in a spot where simplifying does not result in a large EV loss will likely be a rational decision for most so that they can spend more time focusing on other areas where they have larger leagues. So in summary, Equity, EV, and now EV Regret are tools that we can use to objectively measure the strength of our hand and the profitability of our actions, which greatly enhances our ability to rationally and efficiently analyze our strategic decisions. That is a video for today. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay balanced. Let's <laughs> go.